Manchester was the home of the world's first stored programme computer, of the world's first commercially available computer, and of the world's first transistorised computer. And it was a man in Manchester who wrote the world's first computer programme. It has been said of him that his mark is on every modern computer in the world today, and he's Professor Tom Kilburn. I was very careful to say a man in Manchester, not a Manchester man. You weren't born here. No, I was born in Yorkshire, in Dewsbury, in Yorkshire. And then he went to Cambridge, what, as a mathematician or an engineer? As a mathematician. Uh, read mathematics there. And, uh, and then I was uh, called up during the war and uh, sent to TRE, the Telecommunications Research Establishment at Malden. Now, that was the place where they invented radar, was yes. it? Yes. It must have been an incredible think tank, that place. It was uh, a very exciting uh, place to, to work. Uh, I was uh, put in uh, Prof Professor Williams, uh, later Professor Williams' group, Freddie Williams' group, uh -huh. uh, which was a group specialising in electronic circuitry, valve circuitry, of course, yeah. at that time. Well, now, you and Freddie Williams came to Manchester together. Why did you choose Manchester? Well, Freddie Williams uh, was appointed to the chair of electrical engineering uh, about December 1946, and he, he invited me to come and uh, do a PhD to continue to develop uh, a memory system for a computer. At uh, TRE, um, Freddie Williams had been an ambassador for TRE and gone to the States and seen some work on radar echoes, which involved storing analog uh, signals on a cathode ray tube. And uh, after he'd come back in about the middle of 46, he had an idea for uh, storing digits on cathode ray tube and uh, by December 46 he stored one digit, one single binary digit on a cathode ray tube. Because when you say cathode ray tubes you make us all think of television and yet your first computer that you built in Manchester was very much like a wireless set, wasn't it? It was all valves. Yes, it, it, it was valves. Uh, but yes, it, the, the cathode ray tube is essentially like a television tube. Um, but the mechanism is such that instead of merely uh, accepting signals coming in from the transmitter and displaying them for viewing, um, signals put in by an input are stored there and kept there as long as, poss as long as you wish. Well, now you started to build the first computer, Mark I, I think you called it, when? Towards the end of 1947, we were pretty clear what kind of computer we were going to build. And uh, it was rather different from most of the others being contemplated because of this feature of the uh, immediate access of the storage system. That's the essence of it, is it? That you can, you can find the information that you've put there at once? Yes, that was the essence of the Manchester computers. And uh, uh, I think this uh, bypassed a lot of trouble which, which the other storage system... Mm -hmm. uh, well, who paid for it? I mean, when you built this first Manchester computer, did you have to go around cap in hand to get some money? or? Well, I, I was uh, not transferred to Manchester University as an employee of Manchester University. I was sent uh, on outside duty from TRE for the first two years, and I only became a Manchester University employee after two years. So I was able to draw on the stores of, uh, of TRE, and uh, by this mechanism we got cathode ray tubes and valves. So you're really just begging bits and pieces to build it? That's right, yes. With, with, with the permission of TRE, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. No, <laughs> no, you weren't pinching this stuff. But when you built it, I mean, it was a, it was a huge thing. Well, when we think of computers now as little things, I mean, it filled a room, as I recall. Yes, the room would be about seven yards square, and it was fairly full of, of uh, valve circuitry. So, so much so that, of course, we didn't have a luxury of air conditioning or anything. The, the temperature often got above 100, and... Uh, it was quite unpleasant working in there when the room actually got full of equipment. Nor was it a thing of beauty, was it? No, it wasn't. It was completely exposed to the elements. Um, in fact, in order to cool the room, we opened some windows and there was a sudden summer storm uh, and uh, the back of uh, two or three racks was sprayed mm -hmm. with water and that, that cost us about two or three weeks of uh, rebuilding. Now, what did the world think of this? I mean, people must have come, government people, other scientists, industrialists. Did they think you were all nutters working on it, or that, could they see the future? No, but there were a very small number of people, um, relatively, who were um, interested in computers at that time, even as late as 1951, when we 
held a conference uh, to install the first uh, computer which had been made uh, from our design by Ferrantes. Even as late as that, uh, all the people that we could think of who would be interested in such a computer would went into the electrical engineering lecture theatre, uh -huh. perhaps 150 people. And were they impressed? Uh, well, they, they were fairly uh, down-to-earth people who uh, uh, take a bit of impressing. I mean, they were fellow scientists by and large. Uh -huh. Well, now, Ferranti was the first industrial firm, was it, to show interest? Uh, or at least to do something about it? In this country, uh -huh. that's certainly true, yes. And uh, they collaborated with us uh, from as early, I believe, as about February 48, when um, they made a magnetic drum for us uh -huh. to... Uh, take part in the storage system of the computer. And the first Ferranti computer was what, just a development of the Manchester University Mark I? Yes, uh, the, the Mark I was fully developed into a, into a large machine by uh, August 49 and one of the people working on it, Geoffrey Tootill, um, at the university went to Ferranti's and actually joined the firm so that he could be instrumental in passing over the design. Uh -huh. And he worked uh, for Ferrantis for some time until this machine was built and delivered to the university. And this was still an all-valve machine, was it? Yeah, oh yes. Yeah. Well, I remember the invention of the transistor, because I remember writing bits in the Manchester Guardian mm. saying, you know, this is the greatest invention since the wheel. When yes. did that come? Well, the, the transistor was actually invented at Bell Laboratories in the States in 1948. Um, so far as we were concerned, uh, I'd, I'd been over to the States to a conference and... Uh, we found it quite difficult to get hold. We knew about the transistor, but we found it quite difficult to get transistors. And uh, Bell Labs were kind enough to give me a few, which I brought back in my pocket. And uh, we tested this, uh, these, um, in the laboratory. Now, was the effect of introducing the transistor to the computer simply to reduce its size or to make it more efficient or faster? Or Well, certainly to reduce its size. Um, uh, not necessarily more efficient, but because because it was smaller, uh, it it uh, it was easier to uh, build a large computer. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you, because the thing was smaller, you could make uh, uh, more more exotic uh, uh -huh. computers. But so but at that time, you um, you must remember, for example, that uh, the transistors were single transistors, and um, when we started the Atlas computer. Uh, around about the late 60s, um, we were paying £70 pounds for each transistor. Uh -huh. So, so the, the cheapness which one associates with uh, uh, modern developments wasn't there uh, with the transistor in the first instance. Well. The, the attraction was the, the low power um, and the small size. Did the government, though, um, various governments, I mean successive governments coming into office, did they understand what you were doing and rush to help? or? Uh, well, um, they tried. It, it, it's quite a difficult thing. It's easy to blame government, um, but, it, but it's quite difficult to, um, to do anything actually positive. Uh, uh -huh. in, the, in the first instance, on the very first computer, we were fortunate enough to um, have the chief scientist, Sir Ben Lockspizer, visiting uh, Professor Blackett at the university. Professor Blackett was then the uh, professor of physics. and. Um, Sir Ben Lockspizer wandered down and a colleague of mine, Jeff Tootill, uh, saw this man and th the man asked him if he could see the computer working and uh, Jeff said, uh, it's not working just at the moment but I'm, I'll fix it and then I'll show you how it works and without knowing who this man was at all. Yeah. And uh, he gave him a very successful demonstration and uh, Sir Ben Lockspizer then organised the financial assistance uh, which uh, helped for Ante with the first computer. Um, but every book I've ever read about it, and they always talk about the Manchester Five, the Manchester computers being five, yeah. by the time you reached the fifth one, were you already into microelectronics or was it still transistors? No, it was, it was, uh, the, it was the state of development of microelectronics as of uh, 1968. Mm -hmm. and, and how was it then? I mean, well, they, they were, it, was, it was quite advanced, uh, but uh, the idea of thousand transistors on, on one uh, silicon chip was not there. Mm -hmm. there, there uh, just a few 
transistors. Now, all the time that you were doing this work, particularly in the early days, in the days they now call the vintage computers, I mean, did you think of yourself as kind of inventing the modern world, or was it just a day-by-day -day development? Well, um, it was a very exciting time, actually. And uh, I can remember very, very clearly uh, the day when the first computer worked. Uh, we'd been building up to this time uh, in June 48. Um, and uh, for several days, we loaded the program in, uh, but there was always something wrong. And then as we approached uh, one lunchtime, uh, suddenly the thing worked and gave the answer. And um, Jeff Tootill and I brushed out to find Professor Williams and dragged him into the lab. And uh, we sat there and saw it run again. And uh, there were great cheers. And uh, it was very great excitement, actually. It's always said of you that you wrote the first program for the, that computer and you've never written another one since. Is that true? Uh, well, it's nearly true, yes. Uh, I always. Uh, Prog writing programs is a very difficult thing and a lot of people are engaged in it and good luck to them. Mm -hmm. but, but for me, each time a computer was complete, uh, I felt I could see significant ways in which it could be improved. Uh, so that having done one, we went on to two, on to three, on to four, on to five. Uh, and this was the excitement for me. So, so that the idea of writing programs for, for the present computer was not as attractive as designing the next computer. And when you say it can be improved, what does that mean in computer terms? Does it just mean speed? Um, well, uh, speed is a very important part. It, uh, speed is the, is the thing around which the group really revolved uh, because we were primarily interested with the first four computers in building uh, very large computers, very fast computers for scientific work. So speed was a, a, a very dominant thing. Mm -hmm. But, but with the fourth computer, uh, a, a computer called Atlas, um, there was a very interesting phase when instead of a single person using one computer, the idea that many, many people could use the same computer uh, was about. And the Atlas um, was designed in such a way that this was, uh, made it very easy for people to operate computers in this way and uh, introduced into um, the computer itself a significant program called an operating system which controlled everything so that each user felt that he was the only one using the computer although mm. there may be as many as 100 people using it. I also read somewhere that at one point the government thought that with Atlas that was it, I mean there was really no need to go any further, that the, the, the nation wouldn't need any more computers than this. I think what you're referring to actually is, is the very first computer because um, the very first computer was perhaps a thousand to ten thousand times faster than the mechanical uh, methods of computing before it and um, it was um, widely thought that uh, two computers would serve the whole country. Uh, and there, there, I, there must be tens of thousands of computers in the country uh, now, of course. Yeah. But, and all, but, and all but, springing from that first one. In fact, I understand that, uh, that for aunties were advised um, that there was nothing for them in the computer business, because how could there be if only two computers were required? <laughs>